Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. Good evening, I'm Ann Emanuel. The holiday season is, of course, a big time for shopping. And to meet demand, local businesses are participating in Cyber Monday. Our Maggie Hall tells us about the area deals. Cyber Monday is a huge shopping holiday for Americans. And this year's stores aren't the only ones participating. Local artists such as Gianna Del Grosso, known professionally as Peachcraft.co, are offering Cyber Monday deals as well. And as an artist with Cyber Monday, it's been really awesome to be a part of it for the first time this year as an artist because I've had my sales uh, skyrocket quite a bit over the past month just with people ordering for the holidays. Gianna is offering a 50% discount on all of their prints and stickers, not only today, but tomorrow as well. So having my art available at even a cheaper price, I think will not only bring more um, attention to my site and, my, and me as an artist and hopefully get my brand out there a little more, but also helping people within my community who I know and love. Uh, get my art at a cheaper price. Cyber Monday provides shoppers to receive online discounts from their favorite retailers without leaving the comfort of their home. I think that shopping online is something that's not only easier for people to do, but like I said, I think it's also still seen as the safer alternative for a lot of people. You can find Gianna's art at peachcraftco.bigcartel.com or on her Facebook page at peachcraft.co. Whether you're shopping online or in the stores, there's one thing you can't deny. This is one of the busiest times of years for businesses and consumers. Maggie Hall, Big Fox News, Corning. The 27th year of the Parade of Lights kicked off this weekend. The illuminated parade shut down downtown Corning and drew huge crowds from the community. Market Street turned into a sparkling light show with floats from local businesses and organizations. The Corning painted post marching band made a musical appearance as well. The holiday cheer in Corning will continue this weekend with the Winter Festival Sparkle. The long-awaited firearm hunting season in PA is finally open. The statewide deer season kicked off this past Saturday and will run through December 10th. Hunters are allowed to harvest one antler deer with a valid general hunting license. To buy a hunting license or to learn more about the firearm hunting season, visit the Pennsylvania Game Commission's website. A horse head's apartment was nearly set on fire by a family pet. Fire crews responded to a call of smoke in an apartment home yesterday afternoon. The resident of the apartment was not home at the time, but a neighbor called 911 after smoke entered his apartment. Town and Country Fire Department stated that a pan with a turkey was sitting on top of the stove. The resident's dog had jumped up and turned the stove's knob on. No flames were reported and no one was hurt in the incident. As retailers hope for a big Cyber Monday, the threat of a national railroad strike is looming large. Doug Luzader reports from Washington that Congress could ultimately intervene. A strike could happen next week, but even before that, just the threat of a shutdown could start having a big impact on manufacturers and ultimately consumers. The trains are still rolling for now, but this could get nip and tuck. It's going to be close. The shipping analyst Salvatore Style warned this morning that the fallout from a strike could be enormous, even if Christmas deliveries come just under the wire. I think that you probably will get your item, but a lot of people have to realize that UPS is the largest customer of the rail, so uh, usually they send these when you have goods coming from across the country and so forth, so it'll be tight. A bigger concern, produce and other commodities that rely heavily on rail transport and some industries are already preparing. Our country literally cannot afford a shutdown of the rail network. This is a, an economic calamity waiting to happen, and it's something that's completely preventable. The White House is working behind the scenes, but unlike back in September, when the president himself was directly involved in talks to reach a now scuttled temporary deal, this time he's keeping some distance, as some of the rail unions hold out for more scheduling flexibility. It may ultimately come down to Congress, even as lawmakers prepare to head home for the holidays. Congress will not let this strike happen, that's for sure. Uh, it would be devastating to our economy, so we'll, we'll get to a resolution one way or another. And beyond the holiday season, a rail strike could crimp supply chains and fuel additional inflation. In Washington, Doug Lusader, Fox News. Elmira's newest pro sports team will make its season debut next month. The Elmira Renegades will begin training camp on December 9th. 
The team will begin their franchise debut in the Professional Box Lacrosse Association against the Binghamton Bombers. And while their first game is on the road, the Renegades will host their first home game in First Arena on Saturday, January 7th at 9 p.m. For more information on Elmira's newest pro sports team, you can visit the website on your screen. The Mammoth outscored the Delaware Thunder 8-2 at First Arena. Parker Moscow led the way for the Mammoth with an impressive outing that saw him record a hat trick. This marked the first win in professional hockey at Elmira since the departure of the Enforcers. Cornell University was selected to take part in a revolutionary AI program. The Eric and Wendy Schmidt AI in Science Postdoctoral Fellowship is a multi-million dollar program that will bring 100 postdoctoral students to Ithaca. The $148 million program will support the doctoral students that have been selected from all over the world to make Cornell a global hub for AI research. Anti-lockdown protests are sweeping across China as that country faces its worst wave of COVID so far. Amy Kellogg has more from London. The images are all over social media, thousands hitting the streets across China, protesting against the government's zero-tolerance COVID policies, which have forced millions into lockdowns and stoked anger against the Communist Party and President Xi Jinping. We have seen just mass discontent, and, and people are, are linking this to Xi Jinping's rule itself. It's, it's not just uh, protests against some local official. These kinds of protests are extremely rare in China, and now they appear to be moving beyond COVID concerns. Chants of freedom of speech and we want to vote are being heard in major cities like Beijing and Shanghai. The Chinese government says it eased some restrictions in response to the unrest, but it's not giving up on its zero COVID strategy. We believe that with the leadership of the Communist Party and the cooperation and support of all Chinese people, our fight against COVID-19 will be successful. But health officials here in Washington say the strategy won't work in the long run, and the best way to contain the outbreak is by building up immunity through vaccination. In the short term, the lockdowns in China are expected to continue, with Communist Party leaders falling behind President Xi, despite the protesters calling for his resignation. Without the, the clear signal of party leaders' the divisions, and I uh, would expect this kind of protest might not last very long. China reported nearly 40,000 new cases of COVID on Monday, but officials say most of the cases are asymptomatic. In London, Amy Kellogg, Fox News. New York City police officers and a bystander saved a man on the subway tracks just moments before the train arrived. The officer's dash cam captured the dramatic rescue at the 116th Street station in East Harlem. Two NYPD police officers on patrol raced to the tracks and pulled the man to safety with the help of a good Samaritan who was already trying to help. Police say the man fell on the tracks by accident. He was taken to the hospital. Your forecast is coming up next. And later, worry is growing about a possible cocoa shortage. Why chocolate could be the next item in short supply. Say it ain't so. That's coming up. Hot cocoa is a cold weather staple, but climate change could be spelling trouble for this sweet treat. I'm Ashley Strohmeyer. The details coming right up. Here's your local stock market update from Big Fox. Your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. Well, we rounded off the end of the holiday weekend with some rainfall. Even saw a few tenths of an inch on Friday as well and looked at our Sunday total to be just under about a half an inch of rain. But this isn't all that we're going to see before we round off the month of November on Wednesday as more active weather will take us into the end of the month. Now, we're expected to stay under those mostly cloudy skies as we stayed overcast through much of our Monday. We'll note that that does keep temperatures just around those 30s and those upper 20s, so looking to stay near seasonal for this time of the year. 
temperatures, we should be just around those upper 20s. Now, as we start off under those mostly cloudy skies, we'll see some sunshine return as we step into our Tuesday, as we will be under those seasonal conditions. Still going to have more cloud cover than sunshine around, but some peaks can't be ruled out as we step into the afternoon. But as we head into Wednesday, which is our last day of November, we do have some rainy conditions that will be around, but it is going to be paired with some warm temperatures as rain in the end of November. Typically that would be a snow event, but there's a surge of warm southerly wind that will be in place, giving us temperatures within the 50s and giving us rainfall. Now the windy conditions is what's giving us again those warmer conditions, but it's going to be pretty blustery Wednesday and then Thursday that wind's going to be coming out of the west northwest, which is going to bring back in some cooler temperatures. It's a little bit of roller coaster to be tracking here as we round off the end of the month. So rolling into our Tuesday though, this is going to be definitely your pleasant day as we have that sunshine around out of that cloud cover at times, giving us those temperatures into the mid 40s, which even is uh, just around average for this time of the year as that sits at about 44 degrees for Elmira. We'll be around 45 in Elmira, 44 into Bath, and about 40 degrees into Westfield. Now, as we step into Wednesday's forecast, this is where the rainy weather is going to be around through much of the day, even with some of these warmer temperatures building in as we have a chance to be nearly 10 degrees above average into those mid 50s. There could be a little bit of instability, as we may mention the chance for a few rumbles of thunder. Not expecting any severe weather, but can't rule out at least a chance to hear that rumble. Now, with the rainfall potential that is going to be around throughout our Wednesday, accumulation wise, we're looking at about a quarter of an inch up to a half an inch possible. So, not going to be a total washout, but still, we've had some pretty active conditions. So, do keep yourself aware. Just some ponding on those roadways possible with this system. Now, as we talk about the potential though for rainfall on Wednesday, there is going to be cold air that's going to be filling in, and we see that on Thursday, we have that wind gust that is going to switch to come out of the west northwest. So it's going to quickly bring in some cooler air. Also noting wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour that can cause some hazards of even some fallen tree branches with holiday decorations up. Keep yourself wary of that as well as also bringing in those frigid and cool conditions into our Thursday where we do see only highs around 36 degrees under some partly cloudy skies. Make some good improvement back up into those 40s though quickly by Friday. But as we step into our first weekend of December, we do have some more wintry mix to be tracking for our Saturday. Online sales set a record for Black Friday. Whole Foods is under fire for removing some lobsters from its shelves and chicken prices. Well, they're coming down. CJ Papa has those stories and more in today's business briefs. Online shopping on Black Friday broke a new record this year, topping $9 billion in sales, with electronics, toys, and exercise equipment being the most popular purchases. Whole Foods under fire after announcing it won't sell Maine lobster due to environmentalist concerns, sparking fears of job losses. The store, making the move in response to environmentalist concerns, the fishing industry allegedly threatens a rare whale. Maine Governor Janet Mills and state lawmakers say they are disappointed by Whole Foods' decision. Environmentalists cheering the decision. Whole Foods says it is committed to working with suppliers, fisheries, and environmental advocacy groups as the situation develops. Chicken and other poultry prices are coming down. Poultry companies have been able to increase production while demand from restaurants and supermarkets remain flat. Wall Street Journal says the result is prices for chicken breasts have plunged about 70 percent. And Adidas is releasing two new pairs of sneakers in the spirit of Christmas. The first is designed after the iconic bird lady from Home Alone 2. The shoe features gray leather and dark gray suede overlay panels as a nod to pigeons in New York City. The second pair is green. Grinch themed. The lime green sneakers even come with a Grinch keychain equipped with his tiny red heart. That's business. I'm CJ Papa. If you are ready to retire and can hold off on taking Social Security checks, doing so could save you lots of social insecurity. New research by Boston University economists and the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta says only 6% of U.S. workers wait until the maximum age of 70 to claim all possible Social Security dollar benefits. That means the typical worker may forego $182,000. Those who claim at 62 get a 25% reduction in monthly checks. Waiting until 70 gives a 32% added benefit to all monthly checks. Half of all Americans claim Social Security benefits before retirement age. Chocolate could be climate change's latest victim. Ashley Strohmeyer takes a closer look. Chocolate is one of the main ingredients in a cup of hot cocoa. But now your favorite wintry treat is at risk of getting more expensive. 
When it should have rained, it didn't. Farms in the West African country of Ivory Coast produce almost half of the world's cocoa, the raw ingredient used to make chocolate bars. But farmers here are blaming climate change for plaguing them with inconsistent rainfall. It's causing local growers to worry about their cocoa crops and their ability to meet the global demand. The rain hasn't been abundant, and that has hit production. So if you expect it to harvest 500 kilogram, you'll only be getting 200 kilogram. Our producers are really worried about their harvests. The lack of rain is also affecting the growth cycle of some cocoa trees, making them prone to disease. There are also certain plant diseases emerging that weren't around before, and this can also have a big impact. Cocoa farming employs more than half a million people in Ivory Coast. Activists say climate change is one threat they can't ignore. In order to deal with this scourge, which is ravaging the world, I mean global warming, everyone must play their part. We need trees and everyone should see it as a duty. To prevent delays in production, farmers have been expanding their fields to grow more crops, but they fear their efforts may not be successful if the lack of rain continues into next year. Ashley Strohmeyer, Fox News. The Postal Service is announcing its shipping deadlines for the rest of the holiday season. USPS officials say items should be sent as soon as possible in order to make it to its destination by Christmas Eve. The retail ground service deadline is December 17th, while priority mail service is December 19th, and priority mail express is December 22nd. More information on deadlines can be found on the USPS website. Coming up next, we meet a man who just made a national soccer team for the blind. Ten athletes have been chosen to take part in the first ever USA Blind Soccer Men's National Team. Now, this team will begin international competition next year, which is the first step to competing in the 2028 Paralympics. Anita Roman introduces us to one of those ten players. Avero Mora Ariano grew up kicking a soccer ball. I remember myself as a five-year-old kid and already being I'm blind, uh, running barefooted around my grandma's or the street uh, following a ball. He didn't let his disability stop him then or now at the age of 35. Avero attended his first soccer clinic in 2019, followed by several talent identification camps over the years, before learning about an invitation in the U.S. ABA monthly newsletter. Turns out that the U.S. Association of Blind Athletes was forming the first ever USA Blind Soccer Men's National Team. Those four days at the camp were very intense. The coaches uh, make sure that we were learning and understanding different drills, plays, and also that we will be able to execute whatever they are, were instructing us on the field. I go left side, left side. Dan Marshall is Alvaro's coach, or in this case, guide. He kind of invited me to be a part, my son and I, to be a part of uh, uh, just some training options because he needed to get ready for the Olympic uh, selection. And so we just became involved that way. And now it's become more of a, of a long-term situation. And I feel like now it's exciting that he's gotten, uh, he's gotten uh, officially inducted into that uh, first group. And the only person who's on the field with them is the sighted keeper. That person is sighted and they'll be directing them from a defensive perspective. But once they get to the other side of the field, there is a coach behind the goal that will be, I, for lack of a better term, kind of barking out directions on where to strike and how to strike and when to strike. So that's how a penalty kick. Is taken. Averro says there are four non-sighted players on the team. Based on his ability, he will serve as the forward. The concentration now for him and his coach is to get as mentally and physically fit as possible for the upcoming games. At the beginning, I just wanted to have fun, but when I saw that the United States Association for of Blind Athletes was 
put in a lot of effort to make a good team. So <clears throat> this um, sport, blind sport, has been part of, a, of the um, Paralympics since 2004. So now I really want to be part of a good team that will be representing our country. I'm so, it's an honor for me to represent this country that has received me with open arms. We'll be back with more right after this. Salsa dancers in Venezuela shimmy their way through a stadium in Caracas in an attempt to beat a world record. More than 2,000 people danced Sunday, hoping to beat the Guinness World Record for the largest salsa casino circle. Casino is a salsa partner dance that started in Cuba in the 1950s. The organizer said he wants to show that Venezuela is keeping the dance tradition alive. The results of the record attempt have not been announced yet. I'm Harriet Wallace. Thanks for watching.